Hey everybody, welcome to Always Bored, Never Boring. Recently I acquired a set of Army Painter speed paints and I said I was going to put them through their paces by painting up my copy of Warhammer Quest Cursed City. Already on the channel I have used the speed paints to paint the mysterious objects from the set, but today I'm taking the paints through their first real challenge. We're going to paint some of my favourite miniatures from the set, Halgrim and the Ulfen Watch Skeletons. And to start this process I have sprayed all of the miniatures with Army Painter Matte White Colour Primer. The Ulfen Watch have a lot of metal on them because they are all armoured, and there are no metallics in the Speed Paints line, so unfortunately I have to immediately cheat. I need to use some metallic paints that are not from the Speed Paints range in order to put down a base coat to work from, because we are going to use the Speed Paints to colourise the armour, but we need a metallic shine under that colour. And for that I'm going to be using Lead Belcher, which is a really nice dark metallic colour from the Citadel line that I really like. If you want to use a much brighter metallic colour, you can do, it depends on what kind of look you want, but I want something dark and dingy for my Ulfen watch. And I should say for this video, I'm going to be demonstrating everything on Halgrim, he is my favourite piece from the Ulfen watch set. He is the big boss after all. But the idea here with the metallics is to get a coating over all of the metal areas. That's all of the plate metal, the chain mail, the halberd, the sword making sure we don't miss anything, making sure we don't leave anything white. We don't want any of that white base coat showing through. And when it's completely dry, we need to colorize it. And we're going to use hardened leather for this because it should give us a really nice coppery color. But a lot of the speed paints look really good over metallics. And I'm going to be using a lot of different colors as we go through this series. For now, hardened leather is our starting point. And we're going to apply this very carefully over the plate metal areas, that's the chest plate, the pauldrons, the greaves. We don't want to put it on the chainmail, we don't want to put it on the weapons, we're going to be using different colours for those. But the idea here is to be as careful as possible really, we don't want this splashing over a lot of the other white areas that are going to be getting different layers of speed paints. But if you're a bit cack handed with your paints like me, you will invariably get a little bit of overpainting where you will get a bit of the colour on some of the white areas that you didn't intend to. If that happens, you can use some matte white from Army Painter out of the bottle just to touch up those areas where you have overpainted. I know that people worry about the reactivation, I didn't have any problems with it here. You just need to make sure you don't really thin the paint down too much and apply it very gently. Use a light touch with the brush and you shouldn't have any problems. You can see here I'm just lining in any areas where the paint is overspilled without any issues. When that's dry, we're switching to Grim Black, and I was going to put Grim Black over all of the weapons, but I decided instead that I would try something different with those in a moment. So instead, I'm just going to use the Grim Black on the chainmail links. I want those chainmail links to look really nice and dark. So it's the same process here as with the hardened leather. We're just going to put a small amount over those metallic areas. And of course, again, we don't want to get it over any of the white areas that we're going to paint with different speed paints. You will notice as well, by the way, that while I was applying the hardened leather to the metallic areas, I also put it on the handle of the halberd and the leather belt. And I think that leather belt looks really nice. Next up, we are going to take a little break from the metallics to do the bone areas. We're obviously going to be using pallid bone for this. And we're just going to lay down a coat of this over any of the bone areas. So there's a little skull on the floor that will need it. And then there is obviously Halgrim's skull, his exposed fingers. He has some exposed areas of his rib cage and his arm and on his legs. And I think this pallid bone is really nice. It looks really good over the white. I do think it looks better when it's applied over the Army Painter Skeleton Bone Spray because you get an earthier, richer colour. I use that on the mysterious objects, the hanging skeletons. But I do also like this much paler look that you get when you apply it directly over the white. And then we're switching to Gravelord Grey and we're going to use this over the tip of the halberd and the sword. And this is really just to see how different it is from applying the black. And you can use other colours on weapons. Things like blues can look quite nice. You can get a nice sort of metallic blue colour. And as I mentioned earlier, I will be using other colours over metallics as we go through this series. But for Halgrim and the Olfen Watch, I wanted some dark metallic weapons. But that's not all we're going to be using the Gravelord Grey for. We also have to apply it to Halgrim's hair. He's getting on a bit. He's got some grey streaks. 
and I'm also going to apply it to his eye patch. I could have done his eye patch with black, but I wanted it to be a little bit more muted than that, so we're going to use the grey. And of course he is standing on a stone pillar as well, so we'll use the grey directly over that white there as well. And I have to say, you'll see it in a moment, I think the grey over the white looks really, really good. And really you can see we're almost done at this point, we just have to do the cape. Halgrim has this lovely flowing cape, and we're going to use blood red for this. And up until now, I've been really happy with the results that the speed paints have given me. But for this cape, I think it went horribly wrong. I did not like the result on this cape at all. And I think the main problem is, this miniature has a lot of negative space, and it's quite difficult to get the brush into certain areas of the cape. And I think that the speed paints are at their best when you can apply them in smooth flowing lines, keeping the brush going in the same direction, keeping all the lines going in the same direction. Because the negative space of the miniature is difficult to get into with the brush, sometimes you have to approach from different angles, and that makes it difficult to lay down a clean, even coat, so you get more splotches, you get more tide lines. And the overall result was this cape came out looking quite blotchy and streaky which is a shame. I don't necessarily think it's a fault with the speed paints as much as it is an issue of trying to paint a very detailed miniature with them. Perhaps painting in sub-assemblies would get around this issue. But you can see here, we're pretty much done. And on the whole, it's looking quite nice, but really not happy with this cape. And in fact, I was so unhappy with the cape, I did do something about it. I'll talk about that in a moment. But first of all, we have to put down some orc skin on the little bits of grass and vines on the base. And this orc skin over white is lovely. It's so bright and vibrant, it really pops. It's probably not the most suitable colour for the poisoned plants of the cursed city. But I don't care, I think they look really nice. It gives it a little pop of colour. And I was very happy with how it came out. But yes, if you want to, you could do these roots in brown or something. Make them look all evil and twisted. But why not? Why not have a bit of bright green in your miniature? And at this point, I'm finished with the speed paints on this miniature. If you are only going to use speed paints, and of course the metallic undercoat for the metallic areas, this is what you end up with. And I have to say, it's not too bad, although I really don't like that cloak. Of course, we still need to do some basing as well. So at this point, all I did was finish off the base using some Sterland mud texture paint, and then I used some lead belcher just to line in the edge. And then I got a pot of Evil Sun Scarlet, also from Citadel. And I went back over that cape, I dry brushed over the back of the cape, and I also very carefully applied some layers to the inside of the cape, just to get rid of a lot of that streaky blotchiness. And I think the result is really nice, and I would say the cape is now my favourite part of this miniature. But yes, I did have to very carefully go back over it, just to try and even out the tones, even out the colours. But with that done, we're pretty much finished with this miniature. All I need to do is spray it with Army Painter Anti-Shine, and then when that's done, I'll apply a few tufts of static grass to the base. But in terms of actual painting, we are finished, and I think this looks really nice. Of course, we haven't exactly done speed painting here. This took a little bit longer than other speed painting projects I've done because I had to lay down that metallic paint first. And then of course I had the issues with the cloak as well, but it was still much quicker than painting things traditionally. I really like the way the metallics look, that really nice rich hardened leather colour looks really nice. I love the grey, the grey over the base, and also the grey in the hair I think is nice. And the pallid bone is really nice. I also think the hardened leather worked really well on the belt. Overall, I am really happy with how this has turned out, I'm really impressed with it. But of course, this wasn't just the work of speed paint, the metallic paints from Citadel and the dry brushing of the cloak played a part as well. That's about it from me for now, thank you so much for watching. If you've enjoyed this video, please consider pressing the like button. If you really enjoyed this video, please consider subscribing if you don't already do so. And hopefully, I will see you all again very soon. Bye bye everyone. Bye bye.